Hello everybody, it's Shocking Things 1000 and Point for Juicy. Welcome you back to more Pokemon Let's Go Eevee! In the last episode, we um, left the Pokemon Tower, made our way back to Celadon City, and battled, battled all the trainers here in um, the Celadon City Gym. But there's one trainer that we have not yet battled against, and of course, it is the Gym Leader. So, this episode, we are obviously going to be battling her. So let's get started. Hello. Lovely weather, isn't it? So pleasant. Uh, hello? Yeah, you must have dozed off. Apparently she really must love Mother Nature so much it makes her feel at ease. I mean, I don't blame really because usually when you're walking in an open field, you just smell the fresh air and it just makes you feel relaxed. You just want to fall asleep. Right, my name is Avika. I am the gym leader of the Celadon City Gym. I am a student of the art of flower arranging. My Pokemon are all of the grass type. I'm sorry. Did I perhaps? Did you perhaps wish to challenge me? Very well. But I shall not lose. Okay, here we go. The following contest between Avika, the gym leader, and Ash from Pallet Town is about to begin. Both sides will have three Pokemon on their side, and the battle will only end when one when Pokemon. But all the Pokemon on one side are unable to continue. First Pokemon for Avika. Battle begin. Is a Tangula. Level 33, plain grass type with the moves Mega Drain, Sleep Powder, and Bite. Immediately, what I'm going to do is use Sisley Slide, just one shot the Tangula, hopefully. I did not, but no worries because it's burnt anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Erika is sort of an interesting opponent in a way because when it comes to um, grass types, the number one thing you have to avoid is them using status moves like Sleep Powder. But fortunately with her team, this Tangular is the only Pokemon in her team that has a certain move like that. But... Hopefully, the burn will... Actually, Andrew's real. She got another critical hit. Frick. Um, so that's now 14 critical hits for the AI. But... I think her days are outnumbered. So we're going to use Glitzy Glow. And there we go. Tangler is unable to battle! Eevee is the winner! And our Avika's next Pokemon shall be... Did you see it? Oh, fuck, I didn't heal up Lizard. <laughs> okay. Um, we're actually in a problem here. Right. Oh, I actually didn't... I didn't do the... Both sides of their three Pokemon to battle, and only the challenger may substitute their Pokemon. <laughs> My god. I always miss something. I always miss something. But anyway, her second Pokemon is her strongest. File Plume, level 34, Grass Poison type. With the only moves of Mega Drain and Moonblast. So immediately, I want to use Ember... Not really going to do much damage, of course, because File Plume is a final evolution of Gloom. The only way to get Gloom to evolve into File Plume is to use a Leaf Stone that you can get in the Celadon Market. Yeah, maybe if I just spend using Dragon Rage, maybe that might help. Wow, you try I know I should really heal up my Char Charmeleon, but you know, you know me. I like to make things seem like a challenge. Like with the anime, trainers battle each other. The gym leader and Ash catch him from Pallet Town, and he's allowed to substitute Pokemon, but the gym leader isn't, and neither of them actually use healing items. But anyway, Fire Bloom is. File Plume is unable to battle! Charmeleon wins! And uh, Rika is about to bring out her final Pokemon! 
And of course I'm going to switch out here to Nido Queen. Let's go Nido Queen, we need your help in this one. The last Pokemon for a Rika. Weeping Bell, level 33, Grass Poison type with the only attacking moves of Mega Drain and Poison Jab. Uh, this week, well, basically, Tangler is only the, well, Tangler is basically the only Pokemon you have to basically worry about, to be honest. But, uh, Foul Plume with Moonblast, as you can pretty much tell, yeah. Moonblast was basically a move introduced in Generation 6. Even though this is a Generation 7 game, it's still based in Generation 1. So, it kind of varies with the whole scenario, really. We're playing a Gen 7 game in a Gen 1 environment. That's kind of what I'm implying. Okay, we'll use Dig once again. It's not going to kill the um, Weeping Bell. And in case you're wondering, she loves using Mega Drain. She's made Tangler use it every turn. She's made Fire Bloom use it every turn. And now she's making Weeping Bell use it every turn. I think you can tell what TM we're going to be getting at the end of this battle. I think you can tell. Okay, there we go. And we've got this in the bag. Yeah. Weeping Bell is unable to battle. Neo Queen wins, and the victory goes to Ash from Pallet Town. I do still try my best, honestly. I think I'm slowly getting better at it, but my voice just doesn't make it sound good. You can see the feet, you're remarkably strong, yep. I must confer on you a rainbow badge. A rainbow badge raises the level of Pokemon willing to listen to you to level 50. A Pokemon that you have received from other trainers as well. And here, if you'd like, please also take this with you. Yep, TM53 Mega Drain. Basically, what Mega Drain does is it heals up half the damage take. Uh, well, basically, you deal damage to your opponent, and the amount of HP you earn after the end of the battle is basically half of what damage you've dealt to the opponent. There, yeah, Evie. I gotta thank you for that battle. In fact, I gotta thank everybody, actually. You all work together as a very diligent team. Right, so we'll put... Um... Gary of those back in. Eh, whoops. Yeah, it's kind of sad, really, seeing that Gary Rose is the only Pokemon that's not level 34. In, but, we have three rare candies, so we may as well make the most of it. There we go. So, in fact, I think Gary Rose has actually received a lot of screen time lately, so I think we'll let... Um, neither queen being the front party for once. So yeah, we now have four gym badges under our belt. You probably might think we can go to Saffron City now. Um, the answer is no. In fact, this is actually something I honestly believe to be the case. Every single time when I play through the Kanto region, the gyms I always did in order were Pewter City... Carillion City, Vermilion City, Celadon City, and then Saffron City. But, Saffron City, I always thought that was to be gym number five, is actually gym number six. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I always mistakenly thought that Saffron City was the next gym to battle after Celadon City, and I always thought that for... Yeah, every time I played Pokemon for like eight years when I first started playing it, from the year 20, uh, 2010 to 2018, 
I always believed that Saffron City was the fifth gym to challenge in Pokemon. But I was completely and utterly wrong. Right, first and foremost, before anything else, I'm actually going to be going into um, the department store and I'm going to be selling all these um, candies that keep roaming around in my bag. Oh, and in case you're wondering, those PP-ups over there, uh, they are actually good selling items as well. So, um, we'll obviously sell those PP-ups because we're not really going to be doing competitive battling in this profile. So we've got 5,000 for just one of them. And of course we'll be selling these um, X items, which are basically known as battle items in this game. Well, all games actually. There we go. I know I could sell those pewter crunchies as well, but they can be handy. And I suppose we're delivering some mail through. Okay. Now let's see which... Um... Right, so the only TMs we can buy are Iron Tail and Dragon Tail. Um, I would technically buy these, but the fact is... Dragon Tail was always known... To force a Pokemon to be switched out for another Pokemon while also taking damage. But it doesn't actually do that in this game as far as I recall. Iron Tail has a chance of lowering your opponent's physical defense. But it is 100 power but 75% accuracy. And you notice the other move there was Hyper Beam. That's basically a very powerful normal type move. And oh! We have a sleeping Pokemon here. I'm of course going to save right here. And I recommend you do this too. This is not known to be a legendary Pokemon. But. Yeah. So we played the Pokey Flute, and Snorlax woke up, and is looking at us and looks hungry. Yeah, Snorlax always looks hungry. Hey, Ash! Wow, Mr. Fuji, you can run! There's something I forgot to mention when I gave you the Pokey Flute. Oh, perfect timing. You see, this Pokemon is called Snorlax. It's been known to attack the first thing it sees after waking up. It thinks what it sees is food. Since it can be pretty dangerous, please help it calm down by battling in with your Pokemon. Once you defeat it, it will become more docile. You should be able to catch it just like any other Pokemon. Yeah. When you wake up Snorlax... Wait, whoa! Oh, we got an aura. It, well, when is it? Yeah, it's kind of like an aura. So Snorlax has already raised his defense. But the first thing we're going to be doing is using Toxic. So yeah, as you notice in the top left hand corner, it's very faint, but you can faintly see it. We have a match time. It always starts with five minutes when you're doing a battle against Snorlax. And also... Um... Um... Battling a legendary Pokemon. Right, we would actually use Shadow Ball this very stage because it is a powerful attack. But the only problem is Snorlax is a normal type Pokemon, so it's not going to affect him. So, we've been paralyzed with the very first lick, which I was honestly highly expecting to happen. But... And yeah, in case you're wondering, that does actually count for the AI getting an additional effect. And of course I get paralyzed in the middle of my attack and I can't attack. If there's one thing that I absolutely hate when it comes to status conditions, it's paralysis. Deep down, it is always paralysis. 
I'm gonna heal up um, Needle Queen's HP because I don't want Needle Queen to faint. Now, every single time when I have a Pokemon use Headbutt, I always say it in a very funny tone. It's like, Headbutt, poof, and it's just like that. I always do that. Um, right, of course, I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep um, Needle Queen paralyzed, actually. Because... Um, I'm being away... You got a critical hit, jeez. Okay, I don't even know why. I mean, when we first started this playthrough, we um, were getting additional effects and critical hits like crazy, and now the AI is doing it. But in case you're wondering, Snorlax will not run away from you. So the best thing to do is just use a raspberry and then throw the Pokeball at him. He is a hard Pokemon to catch. His catch rate is not very high. So if anything, using a raspberry will actually help in this scenario. Right, obviously gonna wait for that. There we go. Excellent throw again. Hopefully you'll catch him this time. And the answer of course being no. Right, so instead I guess we'll use a pineapple berry. Yep, pineapple berry worked. Because apparently some Pokemon do not like certain berries. And actually helped Evelyn level up. So here we go. Snorlax, the sleeping Pokemon. It will eat anything. Even if the food happens to be a little moldy, it never gets an upset stomach. And you wonder why. Oh my gosh, that was impressive. There are other Pokemon out there that will try to attack trainers just like Snorlax did. When facing such a Pokemon, the best thing to do is to defeat it when, and then catch it. Remember, defeat, then catch. In that order. Well, I'll see you later then. And obviously in case you're wondering, yes, yeah, Snorlax is not really going to be a member in my team. But just for curiosity's sake, let's have a look what his summary is. Adamant Nature with 31 IV HP! Oh my god, that is the best Snorlax I have ever received. As a wild. But I still don't want to use it in my team. <laughs> yeah, believe me when I say this, I would seriously use this Snorlax. Is a plus physical attack minus special attack, and it has 31 IV and HP. But the thing is, Snorlax is a ridiculously slow Pokemon. He really is. And I wouldn't recommend using a slow Pokemon in your team if you, of course, um want to deal with the AI trainers so fast like literally you don't want them to do like a BAM one hit KO on you but you want to do a one hit KO on them that's kind of what I'm implying but anyway we beat the gym leader we managed to catch ourselves a Snorlax which was blocking our way to the next route this is going to be a good stopping point for us next time on Pokemon Let's Go Eevee we will be heading Towards the next town in the route on the left-hand side of Celadon City. See you guys then.